Let's uh, have a look at the title of the talk. It says, Building Modular and Scalable Consensus Using the MIR Framework. So there are some important keywords here. Modular, scalable, and consensus. So uh, especially consensus is what, mm, what a lot of uh, these talks revolve around. And my slides don't change, now they do. Uh, so first, let's think a moment about what uh, ecosystem we are we are in here. We have a really big diversity in agreement protocols and uh, their specifications. Uh, all the protocols might uh, implement some slightly different uh, guarantees and uh, there is distributed protocols that are literally appearing every week and uh, some of them are faster, some of them have uh, higher throughput, some of them have higher la uh, lower latency. It's a, it's a, it's a really really dynamically evolving ecosystem of, uh, of these protocols. But uh, which, which protocol is there to stay? Which is, uh, which is the one that will not be immediately replaced by some other, by some other newer version of, of some protocol? Well, one way to look at it is the way already Charles Darwin looked at consensus protocols, namely that it is not the highest throughput consensus protocol that survives, nor the one with the lowest latency, is the one that is most adaptable to changing requirements. And <laughs> he was a pretty smart guy. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so, and fun fact, he actually did not say that. It was not Charles Darwin who said that. It was a, it, it's a commonly believed myth. It's actually Leon Meginson, a professor of marketing in Louisiana, who said it in some of his lectures, like in 63. Uh, all right, but uh, let's get back to, to actual uh, to actual consensus protocols. And uh, this will be a quite technical talk as compared to uh, the previous one, which is more visionary and uh, in involving the whole, whole uh, galaxy or at least the solar system, let's say. And uh, here we, we will focus on a computer. So first, uh, I will say why actually consensus is by far not enough. What we actually want is state machine replication. And state machine replication is a different problem than consensus, and it uh, involves many other sub-problems that need to be solved and that need to be uh, researched, and that are actually being researched, uh, researched separately and uh, implemented separately. Then I will uh, show you our approach to modular state machine replication, which is a, which is a, a high-level architecture of, of, uh, of a system that um, implement state machine replication with well-defined modules that can be uh, implemented separately and especially that, that can evolve separately and scale separately. And then I will have a few slides about how in practice we actually implement this in Go quickly with reusable modules and how we can debug it easily. All right, so let's look at why consensus is not enough. So what is consensus first? Very quick, very quick uh, recap. A consensus is a problem, the solution to which takes a value and outputs a value. And the nice property of consensus is that uh, if multiple nodes use this, uh, this so the solution to this problem, then uh, basically everybody will uh, eventually agree on some value that is not completely arbitrary. So this is what is consensus. So, it is important, it is actually a hard problem to solve very often, but what we want to know is who won the distributed auction and how much do they pay to whom. This is what we want to know in the end. Consensus tells us 42. It, it tells everybody 42 eventually, but, uh, but it doesn't really help us too much. So what we do in order to order, uh, the, for example, the, the bids in a distributed auction, we need to solve total order broadcast, or atomic broadcast, which is not the same as consensus. It is, in a way, equivalent to consensus, namely, in a way uh, that is very well defined, and that, that says it is equivalent because it can be implemented using infinitely many instances of consensus, blah, 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 blah. But it's not the same thing. So, we, okay, we can order values, but who won the distributed auction and uh, how much money do they pay to whom? What we can get from Total or broadcast is like totally ordered bunch of values. That's nice. We might decide which value goes first, but it doesn't really tell us what we want to know. So we actually take the total order broadcast and use it in order 
to implement what we call state machine replication, which is again not the same thing. And uh, we feed a sequence of values into a node that has some state that can perform execution uh, of transactions that, that can apply these transactions to the state, that can communicate with other nodes that replicate the same uh, state machine. That there might be some clients that talk to it and so on. And uh, more things that we, need to, the, that we need to care about is uh, to garbage collect maybe some old state and uh, transfer state to somebody who might have fallen behind and so on. And I didn't, I didn't even start, about, uh, start talking about the, the problem of, for example, disseminating transaction payloads to the nodes that need to execute it. So, who won the distributed auction and how much did they pay to whom? Well, now, we, can, we actually agreed on some values, we ordered them, we put them in some state, we interpreted the state, we performed some execution, and the result of the execution can be interpreted in some application-specific way, and then the client can actually ask node and say, okay, I want the auction, and I pay 42 coins to Alfonso. So this is state machine replication, and this is what we need to do in the end. But this is not the same as consensus. Consensus is just, just, just what you see. Uh, so we need to do data dissemination, we need to do some execution, da, 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 da. we need to do a lot of stuff, and all these problems are non-trivial, all of them are uh, being researched and uh, tackled separately, and we need to combine the solution to all of these to, to get what we want. And uh, that, that's very complex. So bottom line is that consensus is not enough, what we actually need is state machine replication. And in order to get that, we need to solve many sub-problems that are very often already well-defined by the scientific community and that are being researched separately and that have, that have uh, interesting solutions and different kinds of solutions, and uh, we need to just solve all of them to get what we want. So now I'll, uh, I'll uh, continue by showing a very high-level architecture of how our concrete approach is, uh, what, what our concrete approach is to solving these, these problems. And uh, we, uh, we are building an algorithm that we call Trantor, and it's a modular SMR system with, uh, with uh, modules that can, uh, that can be implemented separately, that can evolve separately, that can scale separately. And uh, putting all, the, all of these together, we, we get our state machine replication. And this is what we are going to be putting in, uh, in the Filecoin subnets in uh, the interplanetary consensus that uh, both uh, Alfonso and Juan were already mentioning. So let's uh, look what Trantor is. So it's a modular state machine replication implementation. Each subproblem that I was mentioning before is addressed by a separate component that we call module. And uh, each of these modules is a well-defined entity that has a well-defined en well interface that can produce and that consumes events, and, that the, and the implementation of which can be created separately from the other modules. And uh, if, we, if we see that in our system one module is, uh, is actually the bottleneck for throughput of transactions, we can actually zoom into that module and see, okay, why, does, why doesn't this work? Why doesn't this scale? Let's find some other better algorithm. Let's tune our implementation and, uh, and plug it back into the system when we have improved it and when some other part will become the bottleneck. Uh, now, we were also talking about different Filecoin subnets tuned to different applications supposed to, uh, that are supposed to run in very different environments. There is uh, one subnet that is orchestrating everything that happens on a planet, and there's one subnet that is running just within a data center. Well, these are very different requirements, and uh, the consensus protocol will have to have uh, will probably need uh, different choices and different things to optimize in order to work properly. So what our vision is, why did it switch the slides, okay. So our vision is that we, ha we take Trantor and we just can create easily different flavors of it to really tune it to different deployment scenarios with different requirements. This all work in progress, it's uh, being developed literally Every week, there's some, there's, some, uh, there's some pull requests on our GitHub page, and uh, it's all work in progress. So how does it work on a very high level? The architecture of Trantor is that first, we need to get some transactions 
from, uh, from clients or from uh, smart contracts or somehow we need some abstraction that uh, holds the transactions that are waiting to be executed, that, that is the mempool. The mempool uh, feeds the transactions to what we call the availability layer, which takes care and only focuses on the dissemination of the payload of the, tra of the transactions to the whole distributed system, or at least to a majority of the participants. This availability layer module, it produces batches of transactions and availability certificates. That means that when this module says the batch of transactions is disseminated to sufficiently many computers, such that we, consider, such that we can consider it available, uh, it produces a verifiable certificate that, that it is the case. Now, we store these batches and the certificate in, uh, and the certificates in a, a structured batch store. It can be just a dummy key value store with any, without anything else. It can be smarter, uh, optimizing other things that can, be used for, uh, that can be used later for optimizing the consensus protocol or fetching that is, that is, that is open and that is, uh, is supposed to be this flexible. Then we only take the availability certificates, which are small compared to all the payloads of the transactions, and, the, and we order those. In the past, there have been many consensus protocols or many, many total order broadcast protocols that were handling all the payload of, of the transactions. That was becoming the bottleneck. It was very complex and complicated, and uh, many trade-offs ne needed to be made. Here we only focus on ordering small pieces of data that represent batches of transactions, uh, which are the availability certificates. And here we have a sequence of, av of availability certificates coming out of the ordering component. And then we take those and we assemble the batches uh, that are referenced from, uh, by, by, these, by these certificates. And that gives us a consistent, totally ordered sequence of transaction batches, and we give it to some execution module. And again, the execution module can be and often is actually the bottleneck in some, uh, in some state mission replication systems. Well, here we can focus on performing ex the execution efficiently, depending on what kind of machines we are using, uh, what kind of processes, what kind of workloads we are expecting. We can parallelize it and we, we encapsulate this in one module and we can focus on optimizing that and scaling that. So this was the high level view of Trantor. Uh, to summarize it, it uses modules with well-defined interfaces that can be implemented separately, that can evolve separately, and that can scale separately. And uh, this is what we are going to be using in our interplanetary consensus implementation. And now the last part of my talk is about very practical things, and uh, namely about how we actually implement this in code. So for this, we use MIR, and uh, MIR is a framework that uh, allows for fast development of uh, distributed protocols with reusable modules and with a powerful debugging me mechanism. So MIR really is just a tool for expressing distributed algorithms in Go, because Go is the language we're using now. Uh, we are planning to extend this to multiple languages as well in the future. It shouldn't be actually that hard to do. And uh, it, is, it is a library and each node instantiates the library in a process that, uh, runs, uh, that runs on the machine, and it executes the local steps of the specified algorithm. It is an open source project. Uh, you can uh, go check it out at GitHub, and uh, you, will, uh, you will see some documentation, some code, and uh, we are very happy if uh, you post us any questions there, or uh, even, even uh, collaboration is very welcome. So how does MIR work? Well, we see uh, all these modules in, uh, in our distributed systems, all these components that produce and consume events, and this is exactly how MIR works as well in terms of code. So the, the modules of the system are, are represented as objects in the MIR framework, and they consume events and they produce events. And the implementation of the module is basically just a description, an algorithm that says what to do when an event is received, and uh, how and when to produce more events. To give you a concrete example, uh, we have this pseudocode on the left uh, that is a very typical way of how distributed protocols are being defined in the scientific literature. Like, you have some event, and uh, 
when that event occurs, it describes what you do. And mirror uh, mirrors this just in Go code. So, uh, for example, here you see that upon the initialization, initialization event, you set some counters to zero, you maybe do some other stuff, and you, create, you trigger some other event. For that, you need to only write uh, the implementation of the apply init function that uh, sets the module counter state to zero, and uh, it returns a list of events, in this, kind, in this case only single event, uh, which is a ready event, for example. The same goes for message received. You just implement the function that uh, receives the message and the source of the message as an argument, and then uh, you can, for example, check the message, ignore it if it's bad, and uh, return some uh, list of events that, this, that the reception of this message triggered. So this is the implementation of the single module. You can, you can take pseudocode, rewrite it very similarly in uh, Go in the Go programming language, and you have the module. Now, you, take, you can take this uh, module that you implemented and put it together with other implementations of other modules that, uh, that need to, that need to um, be part of the whole system and put them together in a node. A node is really the mere framework's abstraction uh, the, that, that models a distributed system node. Somewhere in your code, uh, m m in uh, normal, simple applications, probably in your main function or somewhere, you just call mere.new node. You give it a bunch of uh, configuration parameters, like what is, its, what is uh, the own ID of the node, uh, where it should write the logging output, and that's basically it. And then, most importantly, you only give it the the list of modules that uh, should be uh, that should be instantiated and work together, and the node, when you when you call run on it, it will just take the events that are output by these modules, buffer them in an internal buffer, and dispatch them to the appropriate modules that should consume them again. And uh, many algorithms are very very easy to actually express this way. So we have, uh, when we create a node, you see that there are two more parameters that we can give it uh, that are rather technical, but uh, since uh, they are pretty cool, I'm, I'm going to give you a little glimpse of how, for example, the interceptor uh, parameter can be used. So when you have such a node and uh, it, is it is processing events, you see that the events are taken from the buffer and uh, dispatched in that you only see one arrow, and that is, that is, there is actually a purpose behind it, because all these events are uh, totally ordered. It's a sequence of events that is being processed. So what you can actually do is to attach an interceptor to the node. It would, uh, it would, it would um, latch to this event, uh, event uh, dispatcher, and all the nodes can be, for example, stored on disk, extracted from the node, inspect it, you can have a look at them, you can see what's happening in the node. You can even, you can even instantiate another uh, instance of the whole node and inject the events and one by one uh, look at what's happening in the node uh, when you're debugging it. You can even save the trace of the events and uh, you can instrument your code, you can look at the, you, you can change the implementation and then replay the, the sequence of events to to see what was happening and what was wrong with your, with your code. All right, so, so to summarize, uh, today I was talking about three things. One is that consensus is not enough. What we actually need is state machine replication. And state machine replication uh, needs to solve many, many sub-problems that are very often being researched and tackled separately. Then I showed you Trantor a uh, state machine replication system that is modular, that uh, uses modules with well-defined interfaces that are implemented separately, that can evolve separately, that can scale separately, uh, that can be debugged separately, and so on. And this, and this uh, system is what we will be using at, uh, as a protocol to, to power the subnets of interplanetary consensus. And then, at the end, I showed you Mir, 
which is, uh, which is a framework for implementing distributed protocols in the Go language. And uh, it enables fast development uh, using of modules in multiple compositions and uh, a very nice way to debug your code. So uh, that's uh, all from me, and if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Thank you. Quick question. Do modules, do they, do they run on a single trail, or do they run on parallel? No, they run in parallel. They run in parallel. Okay. Yes. Every module is, uh, orchestra is uh, run by a single thread, and then the, the synchronization is done on the node level. Okay. Thank you. You mentioned that there is support planned for other languages. Um, which languages and like where uh, like in the process does each planned language's support stand? Well, the support for other languages is uh, not implemented now. It's just uh, something that uh, we, will, we are thinking of adding later. But uh, the idea, let me, uh, the idea is that uh, a module could be basically implemented in a different language than Go, and the runtime could still be in Go. And since the interface of a module is super simple, it just consumes events and it produces events, you can, for example, uh, have a Rust implementation of a, of a module with a little wrapper around it that uh, communicates with, uh, with the node on, and with the Go runtime through IPC or even, even over the network. And uh, why, do we, why would we like to have other language support? Well, because there's many people working with different programming languages, and it's very nice if you can implement your, your module and your protocol in whatever language you're most familiar with. Now, literally everybody whom I was talking about, uh, about, progr uh, like about programming, says that, oh, Rust is so great, and uh, I want to code in Rust. <laughs> so giving these people the opportunity and the possibility to, to code their modules in Rust would, be, would increase the, the base of the people that can, that can use it by a lot, I guess. So conceptually, a module, or is a module a separate process, or is it just like something that you're communicating with over FFI, or? Sorry, sorry? It conceptually is a module like a separate process, or is it something that you're communicating with over like, like calling out to over FFI or? So, currently, the module is uh, is a is uh, an object that implements some logic, and there's a thread handling incoming events to the module, and producing uh, producing events that that the module that the model's logic outputs. And uh, currently, it's all running in one process, and there's one thread per module. But uh, we, can, we can have, for example, in our runtime, a generic, uh, let's say, module that could be called like the remote module, which would just take all the input and dump it to the network. And there could be some other uh, ser little server that is running that is implemented in some different language, for example, Rust, or whatever other language you want, and uh, execute the logic, send over the network uh, the resulting events back, and then this, uh, this uh, client module or this remote module that is running in our runtime would just translate uh, back to Go and, uh, and return those, those events. What I mean to say is, so I do my application, right? I have, I set it, with a defined set of modules, right? And next, on a different step of the application, I want to change some of those modules. Is this possible in Mir, or do you, or do you have a plan on how to make this possible? That's a very nice feature that we were actually also that we are actually also needed. We don't support it currently natively at the level of single modules. But we have a very easy workaround for that. Namely, we implemented what, what we call, uh, what we call, uh, it is called, how is it called? It's a factory module. So basically, it is a module that is running modules inside. So the module can receive an event, hey, create a new submodule, 
that acts as a, as a normal module, and this factory module just acts as a proxy. And you can create and destroy modules, submodules within a module. Now, I said one module is running one thread. Uh, that's the default case. We also, have a, we also have a way to spawn multiple threads within a module and uh, parallelize the execution within a module. So in, in, in fact, uh, this, this factory module wouldn't even suffer from the single threadedness. It can have multiple submodules, each run by a separate thread. Okay, thank you. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Mate. Thank you.